A lot of people ask why some people get PNES and some people don't. And um, the fact is that some people are stronger than others. And that can kind of cut to the heart because uh, for a person like myself who always prided herself on, um, on being strong and strong enough for everybody, you know, being the support of many people and always thinking of other people and putting others above myself. Hint, <laughs> there's a hint there. Um, it was really hard to find that I was one of those people that um, got afflicted with this red flag disease. You know, I call it red flag disease because it's a huge red flag that something was not working properly. That life, um, I was not living life on life's terms. I was very resistant to living life on life's terms. And um, mainly because I wasn't strong enough. And for me, what I've learned is that I wasn't intended to I never intended to be strong enough, actually. Um, God didn't make us so that we could be living completely independent and free from Him. He gave us free will so that when we fall down on our knees, we can come back to Him. And once we are there, I tell you from my own personal experience, there's no better place to stay is that in His presence. Once he bandages you up, the scrapes on your knees and the bruised heart, bruised ego, you know, he does that because he loves us. The best thing to do is to stay in that love. When my life was returned to me after the seizures stopped, um, it was about a year that I was still, I say, figuring out life. Um, on life's terms and trying to see what God's plan was for me. I didn't know what God's plan was for me, but I did know that there was something very mysterious to the fact that I was diagnosed with something that was supposedly said to have no cure, no recovery, no treatment. And here, after six months of intensive studying about neurology, psychology, um, neuro, uh, neuropsychology, uh, physiology, you know, here I am able to tell you that you can recover. And that's, no one can tell you that they can't. No one can tell you that you don't have the ability to recover because I am sitting here in front of you as living proof. I have recovered from PNES or NEAD. I have recovered a full active life. I have recovered my whole self, my heart, my soul. Everything is intact again, stronger than it was beforehand. What I had to be willing to do was give up that life, the life that proceeded before PNES struck. Because that was the broken part. That was the broken piece. There's so much that goes into that and um, that's what I've been, since the start, of the onset of these videos, I've been trying to uh, impart the wisdom that I've learned in different developments or growth that I've uh, come across and learned and share this with you. Because the most thing, the very most important thing you need to get from this is hope. If you feel hopeless, you are going to wear yourself out trying to recover and coming up empty-handed. You need to have hope, so you have to listen to me. You can recover. You are the only one in charge of that. Nobody can help you do this unless you're willing to make some real big efforts on your part to stop your old habits, learn new habits. These are all action words. You have to take actions in a different direction than you were going and be willing 
to become humble enough to say that how you were living your life was dysfunctional. And it's a hit to the pride. I, I know this. <laughs> I'm living proof that you can survive past the strike to the ego. The ego is not all it's cracked up to be anyway. It's, it really isn't. I'm get involved in the id and the ego and the super ego. It's, you yeah. um, know. So I want to just impart some more words of wisdom from my journey. Today I was driving here and I was just convicted, you know, in my heart and soul that I needed to pass on more, more hope to people. And the song from Matthew West, Strong Enough, was on the radio. And, you know, we're not created, like I said, to be strong enough to handle all the world's things. If that were true, you know, the Bible wouldn't say that in your weakness, I am strong. I mean, it just wouldn't. It, with Paul, the encounter between God and Paul, that wouldn't have existed. But we're not intended to be able to put the world on our shoulders and be able to handle it. We will fall apart. And there's more than enough evidence in this world that we're not intended to do that. We're supposed to have a support system. And at the very top of that support system, if you think of it like, you know, a triangle or a pyramid, the very top should be God. He should be our number one go-to. And then just like, you know, if you're on a calling tree, the next chain of command would be, you know, your spiritual support system. And then the next people, and those people have to have the same morals that you do, by the way. Because if you're being advised from somebody who is maybe um, not where you are, you know, either one way or the other, it's going to cause conflict because you're not gonna feel true to yourself. So you need people around you that speak your same lingo, basically. The next people on that chain are gonna be, you know, friends and family who are, you know, like acquaintances, you know, maybe people in prayer meeting or Bible study that you can lean on for generalized support. And um, nowhere on there will you find people who are not supporting who you are. So just keep that in mind when you're talking about supporting uh, getting support from people, you need to look for people who support who you are. Don't look at people who are already in your life, maybe built into your life already, who don't accept you for who you are. Because that will only hurt you. That will only hurt the process of developing you. You need people who are supportive of your journey. So again, God is the number one. Talking to Him for advice asking for support, telling him that you'll rely on him with your heart, soul, mind, and all your strength, that you'll trust him, that's the number one priority. Trying to get yourself to have that be your automatic go-to, and then go down through your spiritual supports. Um, and don't try to be a support for somebody uh, who is struggling heavily with really emotionally heavy and just spiritually heavy circumstances that you aren't able to control. Because again, taking on more than you can, can um, handle, that's going to be counterproductive. You need the support right now. You need to help in little ways, you know, help people who, you know, maybe make a meal for somebody who needs a meal or give a bag of food to the homeless or something that you're contributing and you have that sense of contribution and that you're participating in something greater than yourself. Getting out of your own head is really important to do. Practice adding time in where you're just not focused on you. That's really important. Um, but you know, to jump back to that song, you know, I can do all things through the one who gives me strength, not through me. I'm limited in this human body, in this human figure, I'm limited. But there is no limitation on what God can do. And so if you believe in Him, if you trust Him, then put that trust and belief into some serious action 
and really start getting on your knees to pray. Commit your heart to Him. Commit your ways to Him. Commit your every person in your life to Him. Start praying for the people in your lives, including your enemies, including um, people that persecute you, including people that don't understand you. Pray blessings on them and just watch how God will transform your life. Watch how God will honor that. He says, draw nearer to me and I will draw nearer to you. And that's a promise. And there's not one person in this world who can claim what God can claim. He cannot lie. He cannot lie. And there are a lot of people, including myself, you know, who would say like, oh, I never lie. But that's something that we have said in the past, you know, just because we didn't realize how much we lied to ourselves. But God has no ability to lie. He can't deny who he is. So if he makes a promise, draw nearer to me and I will draw nearer to you, that is a promise and he will honor that if you draw nearer to him. And the very first way to do that is by humbling yourself in prayer. Humbling yourself, for me, starts on my knees. Starts on my knees in adoration of God. And I'll be honest, when I started praying, I needed guidance. You know, I read a book on how to pray. Um, I asked God, I said, God, I have no idea how to adore you. <laughs> so can you teach me how to adore you? I asked God, can you teach me how to pray for other people? Um, and these are all things that he has answered. And you might think that's like no big deal. You know, like, oh, he taught you how to pray for other people. But that's a tremendous big deal. I'm 38 years old and I was realizing for the first time in my life that I had no idea how to pray for people or that I had any clue on how to give God the glory that he's due. That's tremendous. I mean, that the change of my life from this point on, well, it's limitless because I'm starting in the right place. So jumping back to PNES, and there's a huge correlation between our spiritual growth and nourishment and enrichment and our um, development in our PNES journey. We need to understand our limitations. We need to understand that God is there for us. We have to understand that our world is designed where the only ones who have the answers are humans. Doctors, psychologists, priests, um, teachers, all these people who have not walked the same walk as you. I don't understand how they would be under, able to unlock the chains that you're in, the bondage that you're in right now. And that's what I think is so special and so amazing about what God's done for me through this, that he not only helped me to develop into the person I am, that as a natural consequence of that growth and development, I grew out of my seizures, out of that condition, but he also built into my heart a desire to help people. And it's very moving for me because what better way to live your life than putting other people above yourself and wanting to serve the Lord. There's no better way to live. And so, you know, trust in the Lord. Trust in Him with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength. If there's one thing that you learn how to do, it has got to be to trust in God. God bless you all.